Hello and a very warm welcome. You're watching Deciphering Design with Dikshu. Dikshu Kukreja, an ace Indian architect, someone who has the vision to transform India in design. Let's go across to him to know about today's episode. Standing in front of one of the greatest marvels of architectural fusion, a blend of Indo-Islamic and Indo-Sarsanic architecture is the Mysore Palace. This building is a shining example of what Indian architectural heritage is about. Heritage buildings are one of the most significant remnants of our civilization. Interestingly, just the way human beings require precautionary and preventive health checkups from time to time, our buildings also require a diligent effort of preservation, conservation, and many a times, restoration. Why do we need to preserve our heritage? What value do they bring to our culture? Historically, our buildings have been an exquisite blend of art and architecture with astounding engineering design, which sometimes remains a mystery. Architecture also emerged as a form of storytelling, from exteriors to interiors, walls and ceilings painted with murals and reliefs, sculptures becoming an integral part of the building itself. India has a plethora of rich heritage. Our country was already a pioneer in high-rise design, with the majestic Shikhar, Stam, Gopuram and Darwazas dominating skyline of cities with their presence. Robust and magnificent elements of design and grandeur in their details, our country was already pacing ahead in time with its pioneering engineering innovation and astounding architectural imagination than its Western counterparts. Can we use the vast knowledge and resources available at our disposal and create a new paradigm of memorable architecture? Could the burgeoning advancements of technology, such as automation, Internet of Things, augmented and virtual reality, uplift the treasury of heritage buildings that our country possesses? In today's episode, let's demystify some of our ancient treasures in architecture. Welcome to the Mysore Palace. Good evening, it's such a pleasure to be here today again with all of you on Deciphering Design with Dikshu. And we have a very special guest with us today. Somebody who is young, well-traveled, widely educated, spent time in the West and yet is so deeply rooted in India. He comes from the royalty and I would like to introduce my guest this evening who is His Highness, the Maharaja of Mysore, uh, Yadavir Vadiar. So Maharaja Yadavir, it is such a pleasure to be here. We've talked about this on numerous occasions and here is an opportunity where we are going to be talking about something which is close to your heart as well as mine and that's about our heritage. How important our heritage is to us, what a treasure it has been for India over the centuries and where it fits in all today. So I would like to just uh, begin by asking you, 
how you feel in terms of creativity you know there's so much creativity and talent in this country and it breeds innovation but where do you see in all of this scenario heritage fitting in is it something which is you know it cannot be brought into the context of creativity and innovation or can heritage really be an inspiring factor from where we can take on and go ahead with more innovation hmm. Thank you, Dikshan. Of course, welcome to Mysore. We're most happy to have you here. Uh, for me, especially coming from a sort of a background where we are aware and every day aware rather of heritage, I think it's most intrinsic, and you notice it uh, permeating through all of society. Um, we look at it at its core in our DNA itself: uh, the color of our eyes, the color of our hair, skin, everything else, uh, coming to even behavioral patterns which we inherit from watching our parents. everything is heritage when you break it down so whether we sort of like it or not it is there uh, and is something that is intrinsic and flowing into creative aspects and design aspects i mean everything we pull uh, inspiration are uh, from our teachers even uh, taking it forward is part of heritage itself that learning is that heritage which you are drawing from those around you that's really true and one of the things i have always found intriguing you are a young person who has you know spent time out in the west and in that sense has a global influence yet when we talk and in your writings wherever you've been talking about this aspect you seem to be extremely passionate about you know something to do with preserving our heritage and also a lot about design tell me more about where this interest came in into design and what are your thoughts about it really well i mean heritage is the aspect of it especially from uh, the mysore angle i've seen it as a part of uh, my responsibility as well but i've always been passionate about uh, the identity of mysore and the deccan i think it's a unique aspect of india which is sometimes uh, not necessarily to the to a great extent but not to the extent we would like it to be highlighted uh, across india when you think about the romanticization of an indian or a design aspects that come into your head uh, it's rajasthan gujarat that come into your mind not necessarily the south and we have our own unique identity in that sphere and i think highlighting and preserving that heritage will lend towards uh, you know bringing this onto a global scale and uh, as far as of course being aware i think all of us uh, have to work towards being global citizens i think uh, issues especially uh, from a environment perspective and a sustainability perspective pertain to us being global citizens it is going to affect us no matter our nationality so in that sense i think being aware globally is very very necessary and um, of course knowing your own roots uh, is paramount as well true sustainability that's another aspect which is very close to your heart and this is again a subject we've talked about on earlier occasions where sustainability is such a significant you know today people say that it's one of the driving pillars of global economies i think it's probably the fundamental pillar because we have really done so much damage to our planet if we see in the last century that unless we mend our ways i think uh, you know there are catastrophes which already we all are witnessing around the world what is your Uh, feeling about this whole approach towards sustainability are we doing enough as a nation and on a global scale and if not what do you think really how should this perception towards sustainability change well i think uh, certainly we can do more um, the question is not if we're doing much we have to do a lot more because it's a matter of our future generations coming into play uh, the effect of it while we are seeing some of it we'll be according to all uh, whatever the census is we will be seeing the effects of it the next 10 20 30 years and the brunt of it will be borne by our children and their forerunners so if we are to leave as good a world as our ancestors have for us then no doubt we have to look at the concepts of uh, being environmentally friendly and sustainable and i think that ties into heritage and uh, aspects of design as well uh, looking at our vernacular architecture looking at all of the design aspects that come into our age old sort of way means of living life uh, building our homes uh, the way which we lead our lives as well was very sustainable we did not necessarily do things that were uh, impractical to what is uh, in currently in the modern system the way we are building our cities the way we are moving forward the choices of products we are using today are all uh, in a sense really environmentally unfriendly Uh, if you look back at how things were done before 
they were all, while maybe uh, rudimentary or too utilitarian to some, they were all, of course, very environmentally friendly and sustainable. And uh, the best example, of course, is architecture. We would not need um, the heavy usage of air conditioning or uh, other means of cooling uh, if we were just to come still follow our local architecture, which is meant for these uh, cities, uh, which have you know tropical weather. You are right. I mean, one of the finest examples, I would say, is right here where we are sitting over this weekend when I've spent time at the palace and just looking at how, you know, large rooms, but how they are naturally lit with a lot of skylights, beautiful stained glass, and then you have natural ventilation also taking place. All these aspects, you don't really need mechanical means of cooling or mechanical means of energy. There's plenty of light, there's pl plenty of ventil ventilation. Even in the hot climate, you see that the room's interior are cool with nice nice lofty ceilings. So all that was something which was so common sense at that point where one wonders sometimes that our engineering skills were they better than where we are today I mean with all the technology that we have I, I you know we've you're right fundamentally somewhere we've gone wrong in the sense of the way the choices have been made whether it's in the design side or in the construction technology side we seem to have just put sustainability aside completely and that is something I think which now really needs to be looked at what are the kind of initiatives you personally are uh, you know, engaged in or wanting to see yourself uh, be engaged in in the future? Especially in Mysore, the conservation of our heritage buildings, both in Mysore and in Bangalore. A lot of buildings have been, uh, from state times, uh, been inherited by the public at large, uh, which are really beautiful buildings in their own sense, but also very practical. Uh, a good example of it is uh, the Devraja market right, right next to the palace itself which is built in the late 1800s, which was an informal market before and then formalized into a market institution. And, you know, while it isn't of the scale of, say, Turkey's Bazaar, Grand Bazaar or anything, it is certainly in its own way very charming and you have a great number of walking tours, etc. going on there because people are so enamored with uh, what is market life in India and what is really a one nucleus of the city. And, uh, of course, it has had its own tribulations in the sense that the government wants to raise the structure and build it again. Whereas so many reports have come through uh, individually done by IIT structural engineers and many so more that say that it can be uh, restored without the necessity of raising it to the ground and can be done uh, because technology today will uh, easily replicate what was then. India again coming back to the beauty of Mysore Palace and the innumerable structures that we have in this country when we've had a heritage of such beautiful buildings being created here why are we not in a way the exporters of great design to the world in terms of architectural design what are your thoughts on that no I certainly think there's a lot for us to give in architecture um, I can speaking for myself and the community that we are here in the south the what you would call is the Dravidian style of architecture which is the if you looked at the palace from an uh, overall uh, aspect from looking outside it certainly is a is at its core a Dravidian building uh, I think that lends itself to this this entire belt uh, of or this entire latitude if you want to say across the earth would lend itself very well and apart from that it's you know uh, very beautiful to look at and the idea of open courtyards I think that is where Indian life is, Absolutely. right? The spaces which is not outside and not inside. I think those are where, for I mean, at least for me, growing up and everything else, those are where the most cherished moments were. So I think there's nothing more Indian than this: the idea of you know the courtyard and the spaces in between, the corridors, etc. That is where I think that Indian architecture lends itself so well, and we would love to see and make it work if you know the rest of the world could adapt it. I mean, you see. Uh, Balinese architecture being replicated in California so why couldn't you know any of us our Indian uh, vernacular from anywhere across India be you know replicated or uh, influence architecture elsewhere in the world. That's a great example you give because right now what is happening when you see the kind of real estate projects that come across India, we are trying to ape the West. We have, we are trying to create so-called Mediterranean communities or we are trying to, you know, have these projects based on the Hyde Park in London or, you know, California and things like that. While like you give the Balinese example, I think Indian architecture can be taken across the world and our planning principles, these angans, courtyards, all these have been not only so climate 
climate sensitive but really thriving places which which from a uh, sustainability point of view also work but even from a social point of view they were great spaces that were created so i think these are aspects which if they are uh, you know put on the right platform and maybe you know they uh, they are spoken about more often they can really set the trend as far as global architecture is concerned very true uh, i mean i i have nothing against contemporary architecture in fact i do appreciate it and sometimes enjoy being in such an environment given the fact that i'm always in a very traditional sort of household but nonetheless i think for our the general consensus and when we build something uh, you know for for consumption in the mainstream in india in this belt it should i think certain these aspects should lend itself uh, in whatever architecture they're trying to do and it will definitely help all those pointers mark all the list sustainability uh, being sociable being having an indian heritage element it will take all those boxes and uh, i think it will also preserve that identity that we have which is unique yeah yeah so in terms of heritage again you know we you belong to an area where and you live in a place which has tremendous heritage and history behind it but then let's move to the years that you were in the us that's a country which i sometimes marvel at it doesn't have so much in terms of uh, you know a treasure of heritage architecture but the way even if it's something which is you know as young as i would say 100 years old it's made into such a uh, big deal the way it's all celebrated the way it's preserved the way it's made into a tourist attraction they really know how to elevate that whole experience of architecture and giving it that heritage twist in a way when you were in the us what were your years there like what were your what was your experience i would uh, uh, like to know more from the point of view you know going from a place like mysore where you you know you've lived in a building which had this kind of feeling of aura and it has its heritage value and then you were spending years in the us and studying there and living in the college dorms i presume and things like that what was your experience when you were absorbing all that that us had to offer in terms of architecture and design well i mean uh, our our dorms were like any other dorms i mean they were more utilitarian than uh, uh, than really looking for our uh, for our, our sort of architectural well being in that sense but nonetheless it was very enjoyable i was lucky that i was in massachusetts which is one of the older states and uh, you know a, b- historically speaking uh, the oldest uh, is the boston new hampshire or the massachusetts area and uh, there in the especially in the old town uh, the boston common area etc it's a very uh, english feel if you may with its own american twist but it has that old world charm to it uh, in many ways but you know new york was only 4 hours away and there you'd see uh, what i believe you know now is the center of the world and you'd see how life was in new york and that it had a different charm in its own way you i mean each street had its own uh, architectural heritage and every building uh, from you know the brooklist to the most sort of charming victorian era ones had its uh, i mean somehow all melded together to form new york and i think it's uh, to someone going in while you're aware of because of of course in india in the 90s growing up and the 2000s growing up you are very aware of american culture and those things don't necessarily surprise you in as much as the way city life and the way they lead life itself uh, the way they've built their cities and uh, you know it's just a marvel to be there i think there's a great opportunity in this challenge maharaja yadavir i think it's been wonderful as we have talked earlier and as one is heard you have brought that element of confluence in your thoughts in your aspirations about how we can preserve our heritage and yet have a very modern dynamic view of the future we can't be just you know living back in history you have always presented that in your thoughts and it's been great having this chat with you where you are again talking about the fact that you know while we take back from that history but we move on to a great future and we look at modern technology we embrace that as well but don't forget our heritage so with that message i think it's a great great conversation we've had thank you so much for being there with us and i'm sure your concepts of design will help us truly decipher design thank you very much thank you so much it was lovely talking to you and i look forward to all that comes out of this stay with us on the other side of the break hello and welcome back you're watching deciphering design with dikshu dikshu i would say today is one of my favorites episode if i can say it's you know just being slightly biased towards this one 
uh, you've been able to cover things which I don't think people can. Uh, people been able to talk to a Maharaja, talk about architecture and heritage, which is very interesting. Uh, you know, in India, we are very rich with heritage. There is so much that our civilization has had over the years, for centuries. Uh, how do you think people can be sensitized towards, you know, heritage? Yes, Richa. India has the kind of treasures we have in terms of our heritage is unmatchable in the world. So it becomes even more imperative that we really take care of it. It's like taking care of our own treasure. And for that, I would say that it's something which needs to be inculcated in society at a general level. On one side, I would say that, you know, it should begin with education in the schools itself. People should be able to see, teach children the value of heritage. Sometimes in our country, we think that we need to do development at the cost of heritage. That is a shame because this is something which cannot come back. And therefore, it needs that kind of awareness all across society that we should learn to live happily alongside our heritage. And once that comes into practice, I'm sure it's something that can continue to be with us for generations to come. So when we talk about restoration or we talk about trying to preserve our heritage properties, what kind of uh, you know, technology that can you suggest that can be used to be doing so? So yes, technology today, the way it has progressed, it gives us ample ways to preserve our heritage. So there are ways where we can actually strengthen the structure of buildings by, uh, you know, non-destructive tests and many other technologies where you don't need to go about uh, chiseling the building or demolishing the building or transforming the building just to make it stronger. You don't need to add more columns into a magnificent old hall just because, you know, uh, the roof is crumbling a bit. So there are ways technology is there that we can use whether it is in terms of structural strengthening or it is in terms of introducing you know uh, mechanical ventilation lighting today you can do these things without necessarily you know in a in a wireless manner you can introduce security systems in a wireless manner so technology can take us very far in conserving our buildings in conserving their aesthetics not not letting them get modified and yet being able to use those buildings or even uh, strengthen them. You know, talking about uh, new architecture and keeping heritage in mind, something that you've done, the Gautam Buddha University. Can you tell our viewers about that and how did that process happen and actually the inspiration for it? So Gautam Buddha University is very, very special. When I was first asked to design this and I visited the site for the very first time, I was quite amazed or taken aback actually because here was a vast site of over 500 acres and it was absolutely flat, it was featureless with hardly any single tree on 500 acres. So for me that was you know, something which I felt there's something wrong here and I have an opportunity to create something which is magnificent. And for that the first inspiration that was there was about Lord Buddha. What comes to our mind when we think of Lord Buddha is his posture in meditation. That is something the whole world knows him for. So I took that as an inspiration and used that to create, you know, how and where buildings should be placed. So where you have the head of the of Lord Buddha, I place the library. Where you have the body, I place the academic buildings. And at the feet is the administration building, which serves the university. So ideas of Buddhism in many aspects. And then we had eight buildings, which were representing the eightfold path in Buddhism. So many, many such aspects, the idea of tranquility in landscape, the idea of meditation groves, gardens where you can actually go and meditate, then you have a magnificent meditation hall. So all these aspects, even the jali that we designed in the buildings was uh, not just another geometric pattern or a floral pattern, it was inspired by the Buddhist text. So we abstracted that. So I feel that there is a lot where even if we are designing a modern project and this uh, university has been uh, selected amongst the 10 best designed in the world. So nothing stops us from creating a world class modern university but inspired by our heritage and our values. That's what I'm going to ask you next and it's very important. In 21st century, uh, how, how do you think people take inspiration from that you have taken? 
okay uh, can you cite other examples of how should somebody actually can they derive inspiration from heritage property in the 21st century of course i think just the way we can derive inspiration whether it's in literature or it's in theater or it's in dance all these forms of design or arts for that matter where do we take our inspiration it's from what has what we have done in generations before so similarly in architecture i think there is ample uh, you know uh, inspiration for us there which we can take and uh, use in our new designs or new buildings for example our older buildings if we see one of the most beautiful things about those buildings was not just the aesthetics but the aesthetic uh, aesthetics which were derived out of the climate sensitive response so if you want to bring in natural light we created courtyards if you wanted to ventilate them you created screens and jalis and colonnades you created chhajjas which would protect the building from the harsh sunlight or the rain so all these elements which are there in our language of traditional architecture i think we can take inspiration from them and rather than copy them i think we can use them in modern inventive innovative ways and that's where i believe progress is progress is not about uh, you know dismissing or putting aside what has been done before i think we should take inspiration from our heritage and then progress further to create new forms dikshu we are in, in delhi uh, we have a lot of heritage in our city as well so uh, before i end this episode this one thing i just want to ask you is that one of the heritage buildings that actually inspires you on a constant basis which is in our city which is in our city well before our city i would tell you that one uh, example one inspiration that has always been for me is fatehpur sikri close to delhi but uh, it's something which i think is a marvelous ensemble of buildings and open spaces put together marvelous example of urban design so that for me has been very inspirational other than that yes what inspires me there's plenty to inspire me from delhi itself also but one of the places which i very fondly remember is that even as a kid i used to go to the horse khas village the monuments there the lake which is behind the village many people have not even explored that but the way the buildings there are the the old old buildings in ruins now but yet i think very very romantic so that's been a big inspiration for me and then of course there's the red fort purana kila shah janabad which we all know about but these are treasures which for me are inspiration every day thank you dikshu thank you once again for enlightening us about architecture and how people can get inspired from heritage and thank you to all our viewers for watching this episode we hope you enjoyed watching it as much we did while making it hope to see you next week same time